Welcome everyone to Marvel Hub, this is DK Dynamite, and I did cover these toys just the other day. They're of course going to be uh, 24 Happy Meal toys that I believe are live right now in a McDonald's near you, but when I was covering these, I missed two things that a lot of other people on the Marvel Studios spoilers Reddit and even on Twitter have pointed out. The first thing is that on the bottom right of these characters, we have two mystery characters. Now, in terms of who these mystery characters are are really up for debate right now we have no idea who they could be but somebody had pointed out that the character that's next to Thanos may end up being the bigger threat that's been rumored for Avengers Endgame now I have a certain feeling about this bigger threat and a lot of people might disagree with this but I personally don't see the need for there to be a bigger threat in Avengers Endgame since clearly the movie is revolving around the Avengers going into the quantum realm traveling through time going to the past to previous events in the MCU to collect the Infinity Stones before Thanos does in order to create the Stark Gauntlet that can obviously bring everybody back and it can overtake Thanos from his great power. So for there to be a greater threat would mean that we need at least an act or two to establish who this greater threat is, why Thanos is going after him, and you would also think if there is a bigger threat, would Thanos potentially team up with us to defeat this bigger threat? That's something that I really don't understand right now in terms of who that bigger threat is because when you think of one, a lot of things could happen from this bigger threat killing Thanos and destroying the stones while the Avengers have to take on this bigger threat from Thanos teaming up with the Avengers for a brief second to face this bigger threat and then once the bigger threat is defeated we then go back to fighting Thanos I'm not sure how that could even play out because it seems like there's a lot going on in this movie not only wrapping up a 22 film arc, wrapping up all three phases that we know and love, but then going through the quantum realm, collecting the stones introducing Captain Marvel to the team uh, building the Stark Gauntlet, and there's just so much going on that I'm just not sure where a bigger threat could even fit with this movie. So in terms of who that character is right next to Thanos here on this catalog, I just have no idea. And there's also one that's sitting next to the Hawkeye figure as well, as you can see. So in terms of who these people are, you guys can let me know down below in the comments. Once again, just as a reminder before I talk about the next topic, is that Fox characters cannot and will not be used in Avengers Endgame. It is ill legal because right now there is a contract that says that these Fox characters can't be used in the MCU until I believe late 2021 or early 2022. That is after the final X-Men movies release that are being distributed by Fox. We have X-Men Dark Phoenix and we have New Mutants. After those films come out and after the contract is met, that's when the Fox characters can be used in the MCU. There will be no teasing, no cameos, no Galactus post credit scenes in Avengers Endgame. That has been very clear for quite a while now and Kevin Feige just the other day had to come out again and confirm that information because some people seem to believe that because a couple of days ago or whatever it was two weeks ago that the merger went through all of a sudden we're going to have these appearances in Avengers Endgame. That is not happening. This movie was done quite a while ago. We've I believe had this movie shot for a little over a year maybe even longer but I know Infinity War and Endgame were shot back to back in sometime in mid-2017, but obviously the post-production for Endgame was postponed a little bit because there's no need to rush it very much since the release is this April while they had the movie shot over a year ago, so... It's been done for quite a while. The script was written, I believe, 2016 or something. So this has been in the works for so long. And there's no way that they're going to all of a sudden incorporate characters that they didn't even know they were going to own at this moment in time. There is no way in 2016, 2017, when they were writing the script, that all of a sudden they would know, hey, I think in 2019, we're going to own the Fox characters. So let's write them in just in case if the merger goes through. There is no way that can happen. And in all honesty, the only way I would believe X-Men cameos were coming in this movie was if they said you can use X-Men characters right away no worries you can incorporate them in the MCU as of you know February 2019 then I would expect something small in the movie but because they can't even use them for another couple years it makes absolutely no sense to be making these fake Hugh Jackman videos these fake X-Men crossover videos or these fake Deadpool videos as if they're going to appear in Avengers Endgame there is no way that is happening and last but not least Hugh Jackman himself has said Logan is a fitting end to 
the character arc of the Wolverine. It is the last time he's playing the character, despite Ryan Reynolds wanting him to return to do a Deadpool Wolverine movie. It is not happening. Hugh Jackman himself has a condition, and because of that condition, he doesn't want to play the Wolverine anymore because of all the requirements and all that action, and that is perfectly fine, and we have to respect that. His character is over, and it's more than likely that when the X-Men do make their way into the MCU, everyone is getting recast. All the storylines from Fox are getting scrapped. That is probably what's going to happen. So these expectations of these Fox characters appearing in Avengers Endgame are just outrageous at this point. And there's no reason to make clickbait videos about them. And they're still being made every day. We see these crazy videos being released about X-Men characters appearing. And it is absolutely fake. 100% fake news. So definitely stay away from that kind of garbage clickbait. But... Jumping back here to the McDonald's topic, looking at these outfits that they're wearing, I brought this up the other day and how they have blue arms, essentially, so it does seem like the Pym Tech suit will somehow shift in some way or change based on where they time travel to, and this is something that a lot of leakers have been talking about as well, that apparently these Pym Tech suits will allow the Avengers to essentially blend in in the time period that they travel to. So if they go to 2012 New York, their Pym Tech suits will turn into their outfits that they wore back in the Battle of New York in 2012, which to me makes perfect sense so that they don't stand out when they're time traveling to go pick up these stones. It's going to be a really fun journey seeing how sexy these Pym Tech suits are. So if you aren't a fan of the red and white, then hopefully you are a fan of these blue lit up sleeves that they're going to have. And hopefully you're a fan of these suits potentially shifting into these other outfits that they previously wore in prior MCU movies. But let me know what you think of this down below in the comment section. Somehow I missed that there are mystery characters on this toy leak and i don't know how i missed that but a lot of people have been pointing out on twitter so shout out to you guys out there who pay extremely close attention to all these vague details that are released but hopefully whenever these toys release at a mcdonald's near you i believe they're available now but hopefully when they release at a mcdonald's near you we can definitely uh, figure out who these two mystery characters are and why they were kept a mystery in the first place because obviously it means there are going to be spoilers revolving these two characters that will be in the film but this has been ek dynamite be sure to like comment and subscribe turn notifications is on to stay up to date with the latest and greatest Marvel news and information. And if you guys missed any of these trailers, clips, or interviews, I'm gonna play that for you right now. Uh, one of my favorite things, you know, I'm a huge film nerd and I love trailers. And like, even when I was a kid, I'd watch uh, trailers and be like, wait a minute, that shot wasn't in that, uh -huh. and this like that. But And maybe it was a deleted scene or something that didn't make it, but you guys are manipulating things uh, to a different, different level. Yeah. Whose idea was that and why did you feel the need to do it? Well, well look at, again, it, it all boils down to we like we have as much passion for this as anybody, right? Sure. So, and we like you want to experience these stories in the in the movie theater. You don't want to have too much tip to you ahead of time. Absolutely. I mean, that's how we that's how we approach it as film fans. So yeah, we simply do it. Look, there's so much. The fandom is so powerful and so intense for these films. People know them so well. Yeah. You have to work very hard to make sure that people aren't sort of like running down. Uh, running down narrative ideas that may be correct or may not be correct. <laughs> sure. But it's like we, ju we just try to take the pressure off of what people know coming into the movie theater. Yeah, there's a lot of people who have 10 years of their lives invested in these stories. I mean, can you imagine if they read about the ending in a headline? It would be <laughs> it, it would be devastating. It's not sure. the way you yeah. want it to happen. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely not. And I'm 100% with it because it yeah. keeps you on your toes. Like, why not? Absolutely. Yeah. That's, <laughs> exactly. That's it. Then you can share the experience with whoever you're in the theater with. Yeah. You know? When people, because I'm sure people come at you left and right giving you theories and like I mean I'm sure it gets old after after a while like if someone has, if someone nails it just really close I mean you just smile and go uh-huh yeah sure <laughs> I mean it's interesting because very rarely is it people come close because you're trying to be surprising with these things I don't know that anyone ever said to us I bet you kill half the characters at the end of this one <laughs> like it's you know that's the job is to how, how can we surprise ourselves how can we surprise you yeah uh, and so you know a lot of uh, thought and energy goes into that so hopefully that keeps it keeps it away from people being able to guess what happens. Also, I'd say, too, a lot of times when, when a guessing goes on, it's usually more of like an, in a general headline sense, like what happens. And the fun of the movie really isn't the headlines. The fun of the movie is the details. Yeah. Obviously, in the news recently, you know, the, the pre-sales are just out of control. Sites are crashing to get tickets for the first night and stuff like that. When you see that those reports, does it put more pressure on you or does it ease the pressure just a little bit knowing that, We'll probably be all right. Well, there's no, I mean, <laughs> yeah. like, we stopped working on the movie last night, so there's no pressure anymore for oh, us. It's, yeah. gone. it's out of our hands. It's, the movie it's, is what it is. It's in the universe's hands now. You know, I, I'm curious, you know, you guys are fantastic film directors. If you weren't doing film, what do you think your career would be? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. I have never really thought about that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Are we allowed to say like writer, even though that's in sure. the ballpark? Yeah, maybe <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Just right the living. two doors down to the left. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, this is probably, you know, you speak how big this movie is and event wise. For you, you know, being film lovers, lovers yourself, you know, what's a iconic movie that, you know, that's this level from your childhood? Well, what? I mean, Empire Strikes Back yeah, changed course. us. Yeah, I mean, that was, <laughs> that I think was we were seminal. 11 when that, he was 12, I was 11 when that came out. And I think we saw Star Wars in the theater when we were very young. And um, the, that, you know, going in without any context. No. Yeah. Because we weren't reading the newspaper, and you're lucky if you saw a trailer like that because we were kids, we didn't go to a lot of movies at that age. And going in fresh to that film, it, like, blew our minds, and I sat there and watched it all day long back to back. Yeah. Just to keep getting that experience over and over. And that's really why we make movies, and it's why we're so protective of these films, because we want kids to go into these movies and have the same experience that we had. Yeah, you know, no spoilers obviously, but I'm curious, you know, whether it happens or not in the movie, but just in your own personal heart, which character would you uh, hate to see go? Of all these characters, I mean, I think anything we said. I hate to see any of them go. Yeah. yeah. Myself. But, that's, uh, that's the answer. We'll that. yeah. <laughs> You're like half of them. I was like, how do we spin this? How do we spin this? <laughs> you know, and speaking, you know, um, you know the, the level of this movie, and I know that you're working on something after this. It's probably a little bit smaller. Yeah. Would you want to jump back into the game to something this big again? Or is this kind of like. We, we no, love yeah, these we, movies. We I mean, they're not movies. like, yeah, they don't, feel, they don't feel daunting to us in any way. I mean, we've created a, a, a really efficient process. We have an incredible group of collaborators that we work with that, you know, everybody takes the pressure off of each other. So yeah. having done four of these in six years, I think we feel like we have a really efficient team. Yeah. You know? Is there ever a moment when you guys have a conflicting issues and you're like, you can't come to a head and you're like, coin flip, let's just do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think honestly, everything gets beat up to the point where like, whatever, this, whatever idea is still standing, that's the winner. For both of you, uh, who influenced your style of filmmaking? Oh, a lot of directors. I mean, we, we grew up, I mean, look, we love the movies that everybody loves, but we also grew up watching a lot of world cinema. Uh, we had a great uh, theater near us called the Cleveland Cinema Tech, and we would go there and watch. So we, we grew up on, like, uh, the Italian neorealists and uh, the French du Wave, and, you know, but also all the classic American directors. I think, like, know. Sergio Leone, Scorsese, Coppola, uh, the Coen brothers, yeah. a huge influence on us. Um, I think uh, Truffaut, yeah. <laughs> and is there uh, a movie that's not widely popular out there that you love personally that people would be surprised to know? Uh, Crawl. <laughs> I saw one. Crawl in the movie theater three times. I just bought that on Blu-ray. <laughs> yeah, I love Crawl. And it holds up. Yeah, yeah. It holds up, yeah. You got one for you? Crawl 2? Okay, yeah, Crawl 2. There yeah. you go. Not the sequel. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Thank you.